What if I told you that you could build a complete Roblox game without writing a single line and call it? Well, that's exactly what I did in this video. I used only one AI tool, Claude AI, to build an entire Roblox game from scratch. And I'm going to show you every single step of the process. We're not going to code anything ourselves. The AI will handle all the programming for us. And here's a crazy part. Even if you have zero coding experience, you can follow along and build your first Roblox game by the end of this video. I'm talking complete beginner friendly step by step instructions that anyone can follow plus i'll show you exactly how i prompted cloud ai to get the best results including the specific prompts that saved me hours of work so in this video you'll discover the exact ai tool i used and why it's perfect for roblox development the step-by-step -step process to go from idea to playable game and the specific prompts and techniques that make the ai do all the heavy lifting for you all right so we're building the foundation for bathe the baby of multiplayer game where players are split into two teams, babies and maids or chefs. The babies will try to avoid getting picked up while the maids try to chase them down. It's a timed round system so once the clock runs out, scores are tallied and the round ends. To get started, I'll open Roblox Studio and select the base plate template. This will give us a clean environment with nothing in the way, perfect for laying down the core mechanics. From here, I'll build everything from scratch, player logic, interaction triggers, and scoring rules. Next, I'll start designing the play area. With this version of the game, I want it to feel like a chaotic public event, almost like an arena or live competition where the whole thing is being watched. To test out the basic systems, I will add a temporary baby model to stand in for the actual player control babies. This lets us focus on getting the pickup detection and scoring features working without worrying about final animations or assets, not just yet. From here, everything we build will be layered onto the setup. It's a test environment for now, but it's already giving us the backbone of how the full game will function. Before jumping into the mechanics, we need to set the stage. And that means bringing in the right assets to give our game the vibe it needs. So here's a short list we'll be working with. A park layout, a baby placeholder model, and a bunch of the decorations to sell the setting like crowds, party decors, maybe even some cops and vehicles for extra chaos. We'll start by heading to the toolbox and searching for a park. I'm taking one name, Plaza Park, as this one works perfectly. Drag that into the scene and we've now got our foundation. Next, let's throw in the tub. Again, just search tub and grab one that looks decent. We're not going to be too picky here. I'm just going to use the bath tub. So now let's decorate it. Keep in mind that this is where players will drop the baby, so we'll make sure it does stand out. Next up, it's time to start filling the space with life. Head over to the toolbox panel and search for NPC. Once you find a style that fits the vibe of your scene, drag a few into the project and spread them around. Think of these NPCs as background characters that make the part feel active, like people hanging out, walking around, or just existing in the chaos that's about to unfold. Don't worry about giving them behavior yet. We're just setting the mood. Everything shape it up bit by bit. Now with the park layout in, the tub placed right here at the center, and a bunch of background NPCs filling the space, the environment finally does feel playable. It doesn't need to be perfect, just enough to make testing feel like part of the real thing. We're ready to build out the game UI, starting with something every competitive game needs, a timer. So I'll head into starter GUI and insert a new screen GUI. Let's call this one game UI so everything stays organized. Inside that, add a text label. This will serve as our timer UI. You can style it however fits your theme. In this case, I'm going to go with a cyan font and I'll add a black border to pay homage to the gamified look the original game has. Feel free to tweak the alignment and sizing until it feels just right. Next up, we'll add the team UI. Inside the same game UI, drop in a image label and duplicate that six more times. After that, select the game UI again, create a frame, move all six image labels inside. Now make sure to adjust the size and positioning of the image labels so that they sit neatly within the UI. You'll want to do this process twice, for the green team and for the yellow team. Just make sure each team's frame is positioned far enough apart so that players can easily tell them apart during gameplay. You'll forget to rename everything clearly so you're not confused later when scripting team logic. To track each team's performance we'll meet a scoring section. The easiest way to do that is to just duplicate the existing timer UI twice. One will show the team score and the other will act as a team name label. Drag both to the end of the team UI area, adjust their position and size so everything lines up, then tweak the colors and fonts to match the overall look. Wrap this part up by cleaning up your asset names and organizing the hierarchy. Trust me, in the future
future, you will appreciate the extra clarity once we start wiring things together. Now that our part setup starting to come together, it's time to make the whole thing feel a bit more grounded, like literally. I'm going to search for a city background in the toolbox. Once we find one that fits, I'm going to drag it into the scene and reposition it until it wraps nicely around the play area. Now to keep building on that vibe, let's add roads next. I'll look up some road assets, drop them in, and scale them to match the size of the park. Then I'll place about four of them at the far edge of the space. This gives us a visual boundary and helps frame the scene like it's part of a bigger urban event setup. Next up, we're adding some trees to soften up the scene a bit. I'll search for tree assets in the toolbox. I'll grab the few that match the overall look and I'll start placing them. This breaks up all the flat open space and adds a bit of visual depth. Now with a bunch of assets already in the scene, things can start to feel a little messy inside the workspace. So let's clean it up a bit. Let's select workspace. Then I'm going to add a new folder and call it backdrops. This is where we'll drop all the non-interactable elements just to keep things organized. It also makes it easier later when we start adding logic or moving pieces around. Everything visual but not clickable goes in here. From here, I'm just going to fill out the rest of the environment with extra decorations to give the whole place more personality. Think police cars, NPC cops, trampolines, anything that makes the scene feel more alive and chaotic in a fun way. These don't affect gameplay directly, but they do help sell the vibe we're going for. It's starting to feel less like an empty test map and more like a real game space. All right, so now time to drop in a placeholder baby model just so we have something to interact with while we test. Head to the toolbox, search for a baby, and then drag it into the scene. This isn't the real gameplay baby. The actual ones will be other players, but it does give us a solid reference for testing pickup mechanics and scoring. I'm only using one for now just to keep things clean. Also, make sure to organize it properly in the Explorer so nothing gets messy later. Now that the scene is fully built out, we have to make everything functional. Instead of starting from scratch, I'm going to use Claude to help generate the core game logic. So I'm going to open up Claude and type a full prompt that outlines exactly what I've already done and what I need to do next. Let's explain that I'm recreating Babe the Baby in Roblox and I already have the foundation set up. Let's ask Claude to create a game code script and any additional scripts for the general functionality. We will also let the AI know that there's a bathtub asset already inside a folder called bathtubs and I've placed several baby assets inside a folder named babies under Word space. These are just placeholders for testing, but each one is labeled baby. I'm going to tell Claude that the gameplay should start with players automatically assigned as maids. Their job is to capture babies and place them inside the bathtub. Once a baby is successfully dropped in, a score should be added. I already have a working timer that runs during the game, and for scorekeeping, there's a UI label called the green score under a screen GUI named Game UI. This label should update every time a baby is placed in the tub. On top of that, I'm going to make it clear that players should be able to interact with and take up the baby assets. Before Claude starts writing any actual code, let's ask it first to break down all the scripts we'll need to make this happen. That way, we can map out the full system before jumping in to each component step by step. At this point, the visuals are done, the assets are organized, and the UI is in place. But none of it actually works without a game loop running in the background. So it's time to hook up everything together with real mechanics. And rather than manually figuring out how to set up team logic, scoring, and round timing, I'm getting Claude again to handle the heavy lifting. I'll start by telling Claude, let's start with the game manager. Please give me the script and the steps. And it responds with a full script ready to go. Next, I'll head over to server script service add a new script and rename it to Game Manager. I'll paste in the code from Claude and hit play to test. Right away, I can see that it's working. Players are being assigned to teams and I'm placed on the green team by default. What's even better is that Claude already baked in logic to manage both teams, so I don't have to worry about setting that up manually for the demo. The core loop is now live and running. However, the baby pickup mechanic turns out to be the most frustrating part of the entire project. It takes multiple reprompts and a lot of trial and error to get it working properly. Sometimes the interaction doesn't trigger or the baby doesn't attach to the player at all. So instead of walking through every failed version, we'll just focus on the one that finally works. After finishing the game manager, we're going to ask Claude, can you now create the baby pickup script? Claude gives me the script and we're going to add it to the game. Let's go into server script service, create a new script and name it baby pickup. Then let's taste in the code Claude provided. Next, I'll open starter player scripts, create a local script and name it baby pickup client. Once both scripts are in place, let's test it again. And this time, the mechanic works. Players are now able to pick up the baby with no issues. 
And so now we're ready to move on. After getting the baby pickup mechanic working, let's tackle something more visual, updating the team UI so it actually reflects who is playing. The setup's already in place. Under game UI, there are frames labeled green team and yellow team, each containing image labels meant to show player avatars. What we need is for those avatars to appear in real time, but only up to three players per team to keep the layout clean. Let's head over to Claude and say, okay, great, so it seems to be working, but please update the script. I already have a UI for the green team. Inside the game UI, there's a frame called green team and yellow team, respectively. There are image labels here. Please put the photo of the player on the image labels and then the player count to three. Claude returns an updated version of the game manager script, which we drop into server script service, replacing the old one. From there, we're going to repeat and follow the same process. Go into starter character scripts again, create a local script and name it UI handler and taste it in the additional script Claude gave us. This one handles the live player and the drop dates. Now back in the game, everything loads correctly. The team panels fill up with player avatars, just as expected. Getting the player avatars to show up was a big win, but something still felt off, which is that the timer wasn't doing anything. And since the entire game depends on time-limited rounds, this needs to be fixed next. So let's jump back into Claude and type I, please update the script we have to make the timer work. The UI we have should update. It's a text label element with the name timer. Claude sends over a new version of the script, this time hand doing the countdown and syncing it to the on-screen label. Back in server script service, we're going to replace the existing game manager script with the one Claude just gave us. Then I head to starter character scripts and do the same with the UI handler. The updated version makes sure the timer text actually reflects what's happening behind the scenes. After I did a back and forth to get it just right, the timer is finally working. The round starts, the countdown begins, and everything's updating live on screen. We can now say that we've got a fully functioning core loop. Now that the timer's up and running, time to track the score whenever a baby gets dropped into the tub. Without this, there's no feedback for progress and no way to determine which team's winning. So I'm gonna head back to Claude and ask, hi, can you please give me the next step and add the functionality to score whenever the baby is dropped in the tub? Claude replies with a new version of the score handling logic. I Again, I'm gonna head over to server script service and a brand new script and name it baby pickup. Then I'll paste in the code Claude provided. After another short round of tweaking, the score finally updates in real time. Every time a baby is placed in the tub, the green score label responds exactly as expected, confirming we've now got scoring functionality fully integrated into the game loop. There were originally two more scripts planned for this project, one to handle player setup and another to add AI behavior for the babies. But it turns out we didn't need either of them. Cloud's game manager script already handled the team assignments perfectly, so there was no need for a separate player setup script. And as for the baby AI, I decided to skip it. Since this is a multiplayer game and the babies are just placeholders for other players, adding AI logic would have been unnecessary for setup. So with that, the core of the game is done. We've got working mechanics, a functional UI, and everything running as it should. And that's it. We've now built the base version of Bathe the Baby and Roblox from start to finish. There's still a ton of room to expand this, but for now, this build gives us a solid foundation to start customizing and experimenting with our own spin on the game. And if this video helped you out, please do hit that like button so more people can find it. Drop a comment down below if you want a part two where I'll add features like baby AI or sound effects. And if you're building your own version, I'd love to see it. So tag me or share a link below in the comments. Please don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials just like this, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks for watching.